We are the Brain Trust, and this is schooling for the non-traditional student. The Brain Trust consists of three non-traditional students. There's myself, Seth Gustafson, a full-time worker, a part-time student. I'm going to graduate early, and I'm going to get into the business world early, and I'm taking all of my courses online. There's Corey Schnur, a full-time worker currently working from home, part-time student, 10-year path to graduation. He's gone to four schools, one major switch. And there is Eureka Wheeler, full-time essential worker, part-time student, 10-year break between finishing his degree and when he started, and he's switched majors multiple times. Now, this here is Naomi Lenoidart. She's 32 years old, and she worked as a sales agent for Toyota. She made 59300 a year. She's the mother of two with a third on her way, and during the COVID-19 quarantine, she was told she was non-essential and let go. Now she has too much free time and wants to improve on herself so she can move up when she gets back into the working world before her next bundle of joy arrives. Naomi represents one of 6.9 million Americans who became unemployed and needed to claim unemployment as a result because she had no current income. She represents 80% of the 15 million single parents household as a single mother. And see here this graph shows the uh, unemployment claims over the years and this last part with this huge spike from 6.8 million as of March 28th. In 2015, 40% of all students were non-traditional. Just like Naomi and all of us, during this COVID-19 quarantine crisis, we all become non-traditional students. Necessity breeds innovation. Then the need for online schools to become a massive thing made schools push to become an online thing. Uh, Naomi has, lacks motivation to taking these classes due to just losing her job. It's hard for her to get back up and to see the true potential, so we want to make sure it's easy enough for her. Um, Naomi has no income except from her unemployment claims, but she's trying her best to look for jobs. As constant as can be, she's just looking day and night trying to get some form of income. And just like the rest of us, she's informed to stay at home in order to not spread disease, so she can't actively go out there and keep pushing like she normally would. Just as I said last slide, necessity breeds innovation. Now the school had a choice at the beginning of this COVID-19 pandemic, and that was to stop all classes and just halt production of these bright-minded individuals to go out into the world, or to innovate as fast as humanly possible and get into the online-only world. And it was they took that step in the right direction. Um, that assisted in solving our problem, but it didn't entirely avoid the problem. We still have an issue for some very specific non-traditional students. Uh, and the only way we can keep going with this is to keep innovating, keep pushing forward. Our product right now is not our final product. It is a prototype and we need to see how it fails and check the variables and try again. As we keep moving forward ahead, we ask ourselves, how do the problems highlighted by the coronavirus age relate to the more general problems? For students, there's not enough time in the day, and you can't always meet during a traditional class meeting time because of taking care of kids or working from home. You also have to understand that non-traditional students might not follow the average time to complete a bachelor's degree, which is 5.1 years according to the National Student Clearinghouse, which aligns with USF system facts. In 2019, almost two-thirds of USF St. Pete students won't graduate in a four-year time frame. Non-traditional students also might not have enough money because of loss of employment or decreased income, and some non-traditional students don't qualify for financial aid. But USF also has problems. Since March, the entire student body is online, and professors are going through this crisis as well. So USF has to stay open to get revenue, and coursework always has to keep integrity with any solution. By building on creative solutions to modern problems, we're advocating for a creation of USF's modern modular degree path. In this solution, class schedules are built around the student schedule. Professors in USF can set minimum requirements, but this is self-guided learning so Naomi can go at her own pace. 
This also has performance-based assessment, meaning that you can test out if you're proficient. Colleges like SUNY Empire State offer performance assessments for their programs since the 1970s, and newer examples include Western Governors University and the College for America program in New Hampshire. This solution also doesn't have a concept of semesters. Instead, it's pay per course versus pay per semester. Naomi can pay as she can or as she gets financial aid. The Department of Education challenged colleges in 2013 to create programs that don't rely on hours of seat time. And Western Governors is the best example of a pay per time block. You can take as many classes as you can pass, charging six months at a time. This solution also looks to make things better at the University of South Florida. Modern modular classes turn negatives into innovation. Online professors have long used previous coursework for online-only classes because of bootstrapping adjuncts who have more students and classes than time. But forward-thinking professors have built amazing online courses, and it's time to make that the standard. Content is mostly built from best practices, and so professors use what works based on experience and student feedback and collaboration. Speaking of collaboration, this solution also introduces a tag team effort. Multiple professors have the ability to teach an online course, or a department can create a super class. This breaks the monotony of just straight coursework and lecture. Innovating with blended learning techniques with asynchronous Canvas or Blackboard currently, with the synchronicity of face-to-face -face online like Zoom or Google Hangouts. The key is finding this good balance of interactive and pre-recorded lecture that encourages students to stay in school and not drop out. This also offers multiple perspectives on topics, and companies currently like TES and Teachers Pay Teachers have established that collaboration creates success, especially at a time like now. So, how do we get there? You may be wondering how we'd be able to manage such a system. Today, there are several tools out there that accomplish some parts, but none that can do it all. As some of you are likely experienced in this learn and work from home atmosphere, you often have to use multiple platforms in order to accomplish any task. You know, maybe you use Zoom for video chat, Canvas to manage your courses, and something like Vista to view um, your course materials. But what if we were able to combine these features into one platform? Rather than stressing about downloading and learning multiple softwares, trying to remember which one does what, Imagine if there was one all-encompassing portal enabling you to learn at your own pace without missing out on the in-class experience. In order to support this modern modular course model that we feel will improve the learning experience for non-traditional students, we also need a new platform that can accomplish this very task. Introducing USF M Squared Modern Module Learning. M Squared is the modern education management system for the modern university. It is a platform designed with the idea of modern module courses in mind. That means that it empowers the students to take their education into their own hands, while still being supported by the resources the school has to offer. As an all-encompassing learning platform, M Squared begins with curriculum. You'll be able to see what courses are necessary to complete your degree and plan out your path. You may be wondering, how is this different than today? Well, the difference is in module learning. With M squared, you don't have to follow the rigid course structure of a traditional university. While yes, you do still need to meet the proper requirements for your degree, you can go at your pace in your own order. And with the paper course model, you can ramp up or slow down your progress as necessary. Much of the same philosophy will apply to viewing your coursework. Here, you will see required assignments listed, and they'd be accompanied by a suggested order and time frame to complete it. However, students can complete them at their own speed. Say that a student is on a business trip for two weeks. They'd be able to see the, uh, what work they have left for that class and either plan ahead or pause their studies to allow them to focus on their job. The same would apply in the opposite fashion, where they can make quick progress if they find themselves with an abundance of spare time. Not to mention, it also allows students peace of mind if they have any unforeseen for, uh, circumstances that may temporarily impact their studies. Kind of like a global pandemic. This flexibility is what makes M squared and modern module learning so beneficial for the non-traditional student. Finally, M squared answers the age-old question of online learning, how to keep lectures engaging. 
M squared would allow teachers to pre-record their standard lectures and discussions. These can then be viewed by the students at their leisure online. What sets M squared apart is the ability to provide live Q&A as students view these videos. Students will also have plenty of opportunity for one-on-one -on -one sessions as this is supported by the tag team approach of teaching as discussed earlier in the presentation. Now, how does M squared help Naomi? Naomi can utilize the strange hour she has by doing her coursework after the kids go to sleep. After she is a mom all day or works all day, she can now do her coursework on her own time, including pre-recorded lectures and assignments that are based whenever she wants them, after the kids go to sleep or whenever she has those free time. Speaking of free time, she has a week off due to this quarantine, and she can push through as hard as possible and finish whole courses within the time frame as long as she can put in the effort all in one easy access to her degree path. So she sees exactly what classes she needs and exactly what order she needs to do them in order to finish strong. Finally, as we look back on this semester and this assignment, we have to recommend that future students utilize design thinking in practice. And one of the key tenets of design thinking is the importance of empathy. That also goes into when you're working with a group leaning on your group members' experiences and collaborative effort. And don't be afraid to share any and all ideas with the mantra that quality isn't as important in the beginning as quantity, because you can always pare down. And finally, thank you. Thank you for your time, and thank you for your consideration. And together, let's move USF into the future.